today Tony and I are going to be giving you some street photography tips. Some things to do, some things not to do, which gear you should use, how to go about getting the right shots. The first thing I want to get out of the way is the question I know you're going to ask, which gear should I use? I'm so happy to report that it doesn't even really matter. Though some things you might want to consider is that the gear that you're using might influence how your subject interacts with you. So if you have a huge lens and a big professional looking camera, you might attract some attention. If you're using a mirrorless camera, something smaller, uh, it might be a bit more inconspicuous, especially it has a tilt screen and you can shoot from the hip a bit easier. You can be a creep and nobody knows. Another thing that I notice is if you're using vintage gear, I've been out with a Yashica TLR, people are more interested in what you're doing. They think you're kind of artsy, they want to ask you questions. It's easier to interact. You can see an example of this happening in these pictures of Tony taking shots of a group of kids with the Mamiya RB67 with a Polaroid back. The kids were so excited about the camera that they playfully posed and laughed as he took their picture. And the parents were really thankful too. Tony gave each kid a Polaroid picture to take home. So when you're considering gear, with street photography, there's some different things to think about. Not just the quality of the pictures, but how your subjects will perceive you based on the gear that you're using. Uh, oh, also focal length is pretty important. A 70 to 200, not really traditional. You can get away with a smaller, less expensive lens like a 50 millimeter, that's gonna work just fine. A common question we get is, how do you know when to ask permission? You kind of have to know when the moment's right. If it's completely candid and the person's somewhat far away, you're not in the face, you can snap a quick hit. It's a great idea to know what your rights are as a photographer, so look up the laws surrounding photography for your country. They vary. In the U.S., I can tell you a few important ones. You can take photos of people in public places. You can take photos of people on private property unless you're asked not to, either verbally or by sign. You can't take photos of someone if they have a reasonable expectation of privacy, like a bathroom or shots through windows into a private space. Also keep in mind that you might not be able to sell any of these pictures depending on the intended use. So again, look up the laws, look up your rights and other people's rights as well. If you need to compose the person or really get in their face, it's nice to just say, hey, I like your outfit or I like the way you look. Do you mind if I take a quick picture? Some people will just say yes. Most of the time people say yes. Others will say kind of no, get out of my face. And it's nice to just kind of respect that. To see how the masters work, it's good to watch videos on people like uh, Bill Cunningham and things like that and you can see how they work and how they interact with each person. For example, I saw this woman in all pink walking out of a purple building. I love the way that she looked and the colors, so I smiled at her and said, your outfit is beautiful, would you mind if I took a picture of you? She agreed and was so flattered that she had an adorable expression for the photo. Conversely, while walking the streets of Havana, I came across this woman resting and looking at her cigar. I wanted her candid expression, so I took a shot quickly as I was walking by. The image isn't perfect, but I got an expression I didn't think I could replicate. I don't typically take photos of street performers, but if you choose to, you should always pay them for being your muse. The same goes for anyone dressed up in a way that's clearly supposed to entertain tourists or people walking by. These kids in Peru were in traditional dress and holding baby goats. I asked a parent standing by if I could take a photo, and once I had permission, I took their picture and compensated them for their time and for being such great models. Had I wanted a candid photo, I would have taken the picture, asked if it was okay, and then compensated them. One good tip to use is to pre-compose your shot and then wait. So if you see a beautiful location but nothing really interesting is happening, wait until the subject comes along to fill the frame. For example, I like the juxtaposition of the market with the mosque in the background but wanted some people in the shot as well. I framed my photo and then waited for people to walk into my shot to get the photo that I was after. It also can help to shoot wide. You can always crop after and post. Once you have all of the technical stuff out of the way, get out there, shoot, and practice. There's no one way to shoot street photography, but it does help to look at the work of the masters and study what's so great about their shots. Gary Winogrand, Mary Ellen Mark, and Henri Cartier-Bresson are some of the greats to study. When you look at their pictures, think about what you like about them. Is it the contrast, the genuine expressions, the leading lines? You're gonna see something different in each photo that you like. Great lighting and genuine expressions and gestures make a great photo. Storytelling is also very important. A unique perspective can make a shot compelling, whether it be taken from an interesting angle or with just a different idea being conveyed. 
Of course, also consider using the standard photographic compositional techniques by looking for interesting lines, reflections, or shadows. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, or just help out Tony and I, please hit like or subscribe down below, or do both, or do none, or send me money, buy my, buy my shirt, wear my shirt, write me a nice letter, buy my book, buy our book, um, that's it.